In this pot is something a little bit crazy, and it's only really here because I kind of asked for it, but now that I'm looking at it, I'm not sure that I can eat it. I'm a very adventurous eater actually, but even this is going a little far for me. Let me, uh, let me back up and explain how we got to be here. So right now in Italy, and other parts of the world. It's the period of Carnivale. Carnivale is a big celebration period before the 40 days of Lent. Carnivale is where Mardi Gras comes from. So if you picture Mardi Gras, you kind of have some idea of what Carnivale is like. And of course, because it's Italy, they celebrate Carnivale with food, most notably pork. I think the idea is to really pig out before you go into the period of Lent when you give up a lot of the things that you would normally eat. And so every year we kind of celebrate in our own way with one of the classic Carnivale pork dishes, um, such as like meatballs, for instance. But what did I do this year? I told Deva, hey, we make meatballs all the time. Let's do something different. Show me a crazy pork dish unlike anything I've ever had before. And so she did. Uh, this dish is a little bit out there. It is definitely for adventurous eaters, maybe more adventurous than myself. And uh, well, let me show you why I'm saying this. <sighs> yep, here we are. Here we are with some delicious pork meat. Mm -hmm. We are going to use pig ears. Yep. Pig feet. Mm-hmm. And pig skin. See, now the pig skin I'm totally on board with. Pig skin's really good. Uh, feet and ears, I can't say I've, uh, I've ever tried before. And I'm so sorry, Harper, you don't have, you don't say in America that's usually from a pig, you don't throw away anything. Mm, I think it mostly goes into hot dogs, so maybe I have had pig ears and you pig see? feet. You see? Uh, okay, how do, how do you cook these? So the first step is to boil all this because we need to rid off, we discard, we need to discard the extra fat that all these pieces of meat they have. Gotta, gotta wash those pig ears. See, and we need to wash them very, very well. Because yeah, no kidding. Please wash them extremely well. So, um, do, you, do you want to talk about where you found um, this selection of meat? We had to go to an international Asian market because... Uh, because they have everything. <laughs> see, because by the way, the Asian people, they eat like Italians, so... Oh my gosh, that's huge. It's obvious that uh, we are not going to use all of it. No, it's not obvious. I, we don't know what you're doing. It's not obvious. No, it's because <laughs> Maybe I'm, you do need all of this. I'm cooking for just me and you, so how can we eat uh, a meter of pork skin? So I'm going to cut it uh, and take the piece that uh, I think will be enough. Yes, that is the perfect serving size for two people of pork skin. <laughs> the rest uh, we will uh, save to make or bracciale or beans with pork skin. Now we are going to add some uh, spice, some herbs, uh, just to, how do you say? Profumare, to give another flavor, another smell to this amazing piece of meat. And I'm going to use some peppercorns, bay leaves, and I'm going to add also three cloves, a little bit of salt. And now, from the moment in which the water starts to boil, we are going to cook them for 45 minutes. While we wait for the meat to boil, do you want to tell us a little bit about the background of this dish? 
Yes, Harper, but before, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Like so many other people these days, a lot of our work is done online. I'm always on the lookout for tools that save time and keep me organized, and by far the best efficiency hack I've found so far is something that most of us take for granted a browser. Today's sponsor is Opera, the most amazing and feature-packed web browser I've ever seen. Most of us, myself included up until now, just settle with whatever the default is on our computer, but Opera is worth switching to. It has a ton of features and tools that once you try them, you'll wonder how you lived without them. All the time I have to read Italian articles and websites that are often beyond my capacity to understand, but Opera's built-in AI assistant, Aria, just immediately takes care of the translation for me. Speaking of Aria, it's just a click away in the sidebar and you can ask it anything you like at any time without putting aside what you're doing. On the occasions where Ava isn't around and I have to fend for myself, I am really terrible at figuring out what to cook. So I use Aria to give me suggestions on what I can whip up with the ingredients I have on hand. One of my favorite features is how tabs can be organized into islands in order to avoid the crazy clutter of open tabs that we're all familiar with. You can also have multiple workspaces. I keep one for work and one for personal stuff. Opera has a built-in free VPN and ad blocker so you can surf the web privately and with fewer distractions. It's also great for people like me who like to listen to music while we work. There's a music player right in the sidebar that can stream all of the major music platforms. Plus, there's a video pop-out so you can multitask while keeping up with the latest pasta grammar videos. Switching to Opera is super easy. With just one click, you can import all of your settings and bookmarks from the browser you currently use. I highly recommend downloading Opera, which you can do by clicking the link down in the description below. It's free, so there's no reason not to give it a try. A big thank you to Opera for sponsoring today's video. This dish is called cassola and it's a dish that traditionally is cooked in Lombardia. And because usually during uh, the end of January, Carnival was the period in which uh, in Italy during the past they killed the pigs, uh, it's traditionally made during this time of year. This is a dish that uses uh, all the part, uses all the part of the pig that usually you don't use to make the sausage, you don't use to make the capicollo, you don't use to make, I don't know, the prosciutto and all the rest. So they were the, let's say, the leftover part of the animal that, by the way, couldn't be waste. So they invented this delicious dish that uh, traditionally, still now, is cooked. Well, that's a refreshing sight. Some sausages and ribs. It's all part of the pa uh, park. Pork? It's, it's, <laughs> it's all, all pork part of the process? of the same animals. Because you need to learn that from an animal that you are going to you, you kill, you should eat all of them. So the sacrifice is a good sacrifice. While our stranger meat is boiling, we need to take care of our normal meat. And for normal meat, I mean some ribs and sausages. Traditionally, in Lombardia, what they use is a sausage that they call verzina. That is a sausage more or less big like that. But because we don't have, we are going to use the normal one without adding any fat. So no butter, no pork fat, no olive oil, nothing, just a pan. So I assume you're just kind of browning them on all sides? We are going to do this just to discard the extra fat that also this meat has. we have this amazing meat boiled we need to cut it in a piece because we can't use this whole <laughs> you should know that traditionally is used also the the snout yes and also the tail of the pig but they didn't have so this is the this is the light version. This is the light version, yes. And then here we have the skin. Okay. 
pay attention that if you have some piece of uh, herbs, uh, you discard them. Yeah, we wouldn't want that in the dish. No. That would be weird. <laughs> At this point, uh, our meat uh, is pre-cooked, which means that is the time uh, that we actually cook the cassola. And we start with a little bit of onion. Because we discarded uh, most of the fat of our meat, we need to add some fat. I'm going to add a, li <laughs> a little bit of butter. Here I have uh, some beef broth that I'm going to reheat because I need the broth to be warm. When the onion is a little bit tender, is the moment in which we can add our strange meat. <laughs> the moment to add our ribs. Carrots and celery. I realize that I say this a lot, but it smells really good in here, I do have to say. Every time that pig is involved, the smell is amazing. I don't think that exists any pork dish without wine, so we are going to add some white wine. Tropuna does not have white wine, which is Bravo. actually Bravo. The, the only thing I've eaten that even comes close to this. Bravo. Bravo. Well, actually, come to think of it, when we did the Propuna video, actually, a lot of Calabrians left comments saying that sometimes when they make Propuna, they add things like pig ears and, and snouts and stuff like that. So maybe these dishes are more similar than I thought. What we are looking for here after we add the wine is that the alcohol of the wine evaporates, which means that it will take about five or seven minutes. You can understand from actually the smell. When you don't smell the alcohol anymore, the alcohol is gone. I'm adding uh, right now a little bit of broth, so I will reduce the heat. I cover the meat and we can take care of the other main ingredients of the cassola, which is verza, Savoy cabbage. disappears, so this is a vegan dish. <laughs> it's just full of cabbage. We had a little bit of salt. And we cover, so we will give the, we will give the time to the cabbage to appassire. Wilt. Yes. So this step is optional because uh, mm, most, uh, not most, but at least 50% of people who cook the cassola, they don't use uh, any tomatoes in general. There are the other half, uh, 50% of people who use a little bit of tomato paste or uh, one or two very ripe tomatoes. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm melting some uh, tomato paste in some hot uh, broth. A little bit more broth. Mm -hmm. 
Now we cover it again and we let it cook for about one hour and 15 minutes. It starts to look very, very good. Is it sausage time? Yes, now we need to add the last ingredient. Because our sausage here are too big, what we are going to do is cut them in three parts. And we know that the cassola is ready when the meat from the ribs the bones from the ribs. When it's fall yeah. off the bone tender? Yes, perfect. Uh, I take it from the fact that the balls are out that uh, this is ready to eat. See, si, Arthur, I think that our cassola is ready. The smell is an amazing smell. It does smell good. I'll take, uh, I'll take some ribs and some sausage. And some ears, and some skin, and some feet. You need to eat all the dish. Ah, meatballs. I could have just said meatballs. Let's make meatballs this year, Ava. No, Arthur, because we need to change sometimes. Not always meatball, meatball, meatballs. So, this is one of the most traditional and best pork dish that you can find in Italy. All right, I feel like to really get in the spirit of things, uh, as much as I'm dying to dig into this rib right here, I think I need to give uh, an ear a chance. But si, Arper, è buonissima. I go with some feet, so. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Hmm. Mm. As it turns out, pig ear is basically just pig skin. The cartilage gives it a slightly different texture. It's a little bit more crunchy, but the, the taste is the but same. But it just tastes like pork skin. The taste is absolutely the same. All right, now I need to try some of the pork skin, which I already know that I like. Okay, that's pretty good. If you don't try, I understand that someone can be squeamish. But when you try, there is no reason to be squeamish because it's too good. It's really good. It's like rich and light at the same time. No. It's silky. The texture is silky. It's creamy. It is, it's, it's creamy. creamy but, it is, but then you have uh, the taste of the meat uh, and the cabbage. I know, it's like uh, a symphony of a pork. I love it. <laughs> it's really good, Ava. It's really good. I have to say, I'm glad we didn't do meatballs this year. It's one of the smartest way, actually, in which you can eat a piece of meat that uh, actually, what, what do you do with them? I don't think that this is something that you just have to cook <laughs> if you happen to have pig ears lying around and you don't know what to do with them. I think this is worth cooking. You should have your, uh, how do you say, trust butcher? Trust butcher? Trusted, but your trusted butcher? Yes. I'm going to answer. Okay, you know what? I need some pork ears. Pork tail, pork skin, pork feet. Pork snout. Yes. And, and they'll be like, finally, we didn't know what to do with all these sitting in the back. We were just gonna make more hot dogs out of them. Happy Carnivale. Buon Carnivale, Harper. I think that this is, out of all of the amazing Italian pork dishes, this is by far the porkiest, <laughs> the piggiest pork dishes out there which is why I'm hoping you'll forgive me when I make a very pig move, but it's necessary. Sorry guys, ribs can only be eaten one way. So from this I can tell that you understand the spirit of this dish. I hope this is the spirit of the dish because this is what I'm doing. Do you think anyone's crazy enough to cook this? I hope so, because if they don't do it, they don't know what they are uh, missing here. I agree, but I don't know. We'll see. If you try this, send us pictures. Tag us on Instagram or Facebook at Pasta Grammar. Like this Pasta Grammarian who made a very excellent and also very 
carnivale appropriate dish, lasagna alla napolitana. That is also well known in Italy like lasagna di carnevale, so oh, really? it's the perfect fit. <laughs> well guys, we hope you enjoyed this look at this fascinating Italian pork dish. Changed my mind on a few things. Happy carnivale, and we'll see you guys next time. Ciao. Ciao. I'm having difficulty explaining the flavor of this. It's good. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's you see good. what I'm saying? What you need to explain more than is good. It's like scrumptious. how it's good. It's hard to explain how this is good. It's tremendously good. <laughs> how is good? It's tremendously good.